All right, with that, we will uh, first ask everybody to make sure you're muted and your video is off before we get started. And with that, we will uh, allow the first question from Ruth Robbins to be followed by Chris Fetters. Go ahead, Ruth. Yeah, Bob, um, there's been a lot of talk um, just, I mean, between other coaches about how deep the linebacker, inside linebackers are right now. Um, I wondered if you could talk a little bit about that depth and um, who's really kind of sticking out so far in these first few days of practice. Yeah, well, Ruth, I hope we got some depth. Today was not one of our best practices. <laughs> but, um, you know, I think, uh, um, you know, Eddie Hill is playing really well. Jack Sermon is extremely solid. Um, and then we have a bunch of guys who haven't played much football, but I think we got some got some talent. They just don't have a lot of experience. And so, um, you know, MJ Tafisi, uh, I think is a is a really good football player. Uh, Alfonso Tupatala, really good. Uh, I think a couple other young guys, uh, Mickey Ayu and Daniel Hamuli, are good players. Uh, we just don't have a lot of of experience, but I do think we have some uh, some depth. Um, we got a couple of those guys that are uh, a little bit older sophomores, and um, we got freshmen, redshirt freshmen. But I like our group. I, I do. I think it's a, it's, a, it's a good group, and we keep everybody healthy. I, th I think we do have some depth. All right, thanks. Again, a reminder, please mute yourself as soon as you're done asking your question. We'll go to Chris Fetters, and he'll be followed by Lauren Kirschman. Go ahead, Chris. Hey, Bob, just to drill down on that a little bit, since we haven't seen these guys in 10 months or however long it's been, could you kind of give us some specifics on the, on the guys that are competing for the battles at, at each of those linebacker positions, please? Well, um, yeah, I'm not sure I can – that might take a while since we've got a lot of guys, but just generally we have a Mike linebacker and we have a dime linebacker, we call them. Our Mike linebackers go to the field. Um, that would be a guy like, like Eddie. Um, be like like Junior and Daniel. Um, those guys typically, um, since they have more of the field, need to run a little bit more. That, that's where Ben Burke Kirvin played because the kid could run. And um, but, they're, but they're really interchangeable. Uh, they have to be able to do the, the same techniques and that, that type of thing. Um, if that's if that's what you're asking, Chris, I'm not sure if that's what you're looking for. Um, or more specific, I think uh, to players. Um, I think this the biggest thing in terms of more specifically would be just the experience that I think that our older guys have, older, um, you know, Jack and Eddie, and to a certain degree, uh, MJ Tafisi, because they have played play a little bit more. So th those those guys would have a little bit more experience than the than the other, the, little bit the younger guys, since they haven't played. Thank you. We will go to Lauren Kirschman, uh, then she'll be followed by Mike Farrell. Go ahead, Lauren. Hey, um, I was wondering, special teams-wise, who you're looking at as potential uh, kick and punt returners. Yeah, we got a crew back there. Um, yeah. Um, caught me off guard there. I thought you were tall linebackers. You know, I, got, I got to think here. So I think uh, uh, Trent is, is doing really well back there. Um, Rome Aduze, a young kid, is, is doing well. Uh, Connor Gordon uh, is taking some reps back there. So we haven't finalized the guy yet, but I do think we have some really exciting guys back there that can, that, that I think will be better um, as, as returners back, back there. Um, some really athletic kids. Um, I think Trent's probably the only guy, I don't think, no, Trent did not have a, uh, an actual catch in the game. So that we knew, but I do think we have some really good candidates and some good players. Th those would be the top guys. All right, thank you, Coach. We'll go to Mike Varell. He'll be followed by Anthony. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, Bob, uh, I'm wondering about uh, Eddie Ulofosio. Just, you know, what have you seen from him this offseason, and how is he a better player now than he was maybe against Boise State? Well, yeah, that's – we haven't played a game. And so, um, uh, you know, I think the only thing I can say is I think the guy's very passionate about football. Um, you know, I think it's hard to see if a kid has really improved until you've actually played a game. But having said that um, – he is extremely passionate and hungry to learn more. Uh, he's in my office um, every day trying to get better, uh, in early every day, watching film. Um, in, in when we were not together, he was one of those guys that was pestering the heck out of me to learn more. Let's, let's get on Zoom and watch more film. So um, you certainly love those, you know, those kind of guys. And I do think he'll take a step, but the game is what, what matters coming up here against Cal. 
All right. Um, uh, again, please remember to mute yourself after your question. Uh, we'll go to Anthony. He'll be followed by Christian uh, and then Tony. If anybody else has a question, please raise your hand. Go ahead, Anthony. Hey, Coach, you're talking about how you don't have much experience, but a lot of depth at linebacker. Who's been stepping up as like a leadership role or vocal over the first, first few days? Yeah. Um, you know, in terms of our group, I think it's certainly, I think it's Eddie. I think he's a guy that um, our defense, our group and our defense certainly can feed off of. Uh, just the way he plays and his, and, uh, his passion for the game. Uh, I, think, I think Jack Sermon would, would be next. Certainly a leadership type role. Um, a great example of, of how you want to prepare as a, as a linebacker. So those would be the two, two guys. And those right now, if we were to play tomorrow, would, would be the two guys that would, would play, the, play the most right now. Um, so it would be those two. All right. We'll go to Christian Capel, followed by Tony. Go ahead, Christian. Yeah, Bob, I, obviously last year, um, Josh Calvert and, and then Junior Tafisi during the season were dealing with some injuries. Just curious how those guys have, have come back, whether they're, they're full go and, and just kind of how they've recovered from those. Yeah, Junior looks, looks fine. Uh, he's making strides. Um, Josh, a, a little bit slower, uh, a, a little bit. He's fine. He's 100% completely cleared. Uh, but there was, it's a, uh, he had a greater, uh, a longer recovery. Um, but I think he's making progress. He's probably not quite like we're, we're juniors right, right now, um, but he's getting better every day. All right, we'll go to Tony Castricone, followed by Dan Raley. Go ahead, Tony. Hey, Coach, uh, a, a question about the long snap situation with Jaden Green being new. I, I noticed Luke Lane not on the roster as, as a backup. Are you working out anybody at number two, and, and how's Jaden doing as, as the transition to the main guy? Yeah, Jaden's doing great. He is, uh, he is really good. He, he's one of the best that I've, I've, I've been around. That kid can fire the ball back there. Um, he's, a good, he's a good long snapper. Uh, probably Kate Otten uh, and Jack Sherman would be two other guys that we, we would work in there as well. Uh, but but Jane's doing doing well. All right. We'll long snap. I like that. A long snap question. I don't get a lot of those. That's that's good stuff. Over it all around here. Uh, <laughs> we'll, go, we'll go to Dan Raley, and he'll be followed by Chris Fetters and Mike Varell. Go ahead, uh, Dan. Hey Bob, how about an update on Mickey Ahu? Is he um is he is he back to uh, pretty you know full strength and um and have you seen this haka dance that he's done before? Yeah, yeah. We've had we've had some of our of our. Uh, uh, Polynesian kids do the haka, and he's good. You know, his family, um, a lot of them have worked at the Polynesian Cultural Center there in the North Shore. And, uh, yeah, he's great. He's great. At it. He's doing fine. He's, he's, he's making progress. He's, he's doing well. All right. We'll go to uh, Chris Fetters, followed by Mike Farrell, then Christian. Go ahead, uh, Chris. Yeah, Bob, I know that a lot had been made because of the, the transition to a new offensive coordinator and – pro style and all that stuff on that side of the ball. But I was kind of curious from your point of view as a defensive coach and having so many guys that would have really benefited from having an, a spring, for instance, that haven't had it before. How, how much did the, the pandemic really impact your position group specifically? And how did your guys come out of it? Well, yeah, the, you know, I don't mean this to be a coach, but I didn't know what we could do about it, you know, just the way it is. And I'm um, sure we all would have loved to have spring ball and uh, true summer conditioning, but that, that's just the way, the way it is. I, but I do think, I, I, I think our group has prepared as good as I've ever been around in certain circumstances. I mean, they, these kids have been awesome in the off season. Um, they did early, they were awesome at home. And so, um, yeah, just the way that, that it's, it's what we're living in right now. And so that's all good. And that it, all that matters now is what we do today and how we prepare going forward. So we would have loved it, but um, we didn't get the spring ball. All right. I believe we're at Mike Varell. He'll be followed by Christian Capel. Sorry if I've got that out of order, but Mike, go ahead. Yeah, Bob, just one more about Ula Foscio. I'm, I'm wondering, you know, obviously we saw him really emerge in the last month or two last year. And I'm wondering, you know, behind the scenes, what did you see throughout that season as he continued to grow and you guys really realized that this is a guy who was ready for that moment? Yeah, kind of like the things I, I mentioned, you know, the, the kid is just hungry to learn more. You know, when every morning when I walk down to my meeting room, Eddie's in there and I'll, I'll get in there before seven times. And so he's, he's in there watching and preparing for the day, take, taking notes. Um, like I said, in the off season, he was pestering me 
uh, I mean that in a positive way. It could be eight o'clock at night, and he's going to text me something. He saw, saw something on YouTube, and uh, hey, what do you think about this, coach? And so you love those kind of guys. You love his work ethic in the weight room with Coach Saw and his staff. And so this guy, you can just tell when a guy really loves the game. And I do think the kid's got a chip on his shoulder because he wasn't recruited, and he's out to prove everybody wrong. And uh, I'm excited that he's that he's a dog. There's no doubt. All right. Again, uh, please mute yourself. Uh, go ahead, uh, Christian Capel, followed by Tony. Go ahead, Christian. Yeah, Bob, I know um, Coach K mentioned that Cooper McDonald is practicing outside for the mm -hmm. time being. I'm just curious if there are any other linebackers um, who have either moved inside or moved outside from, from what they're listed as on the roster. Nope, not right now. That's, he'd be the only one. All right, we'll go to Tony Castricone, followed by Masvita. Go ahead, Tony. Yeah, Coach, uh, among the group of, of redshirt freshmen, I, I think Alfonso Tupatala was, was the guy that, that saw some action on the field last year. I'm, I'm wondering who's, who's kind of ahead in that group of redshirt freshmen right now in camp. Yeah, I think it'd be Zoe. Yeah, I think, he's, uh, I think he's playing well right now. I think he's taking a step in his game. He's a, he's a big physical kid that can run. Um, and he did have a couple of snaps in, in uh, I think, two of the games last year before we redshirted him. But yeah, he'd, he'd be the guy, I think, at this point. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll go to Masvita, followed by Kim, and then Chris Fetters. That'll be it for Coach Gregory. So, Masvita, go ahead. Yeah, Coach, I was just wondering, you guys have put on the pads, right? Was it yesterday or today, I believe? Well, today was full gear. Yesterday was shells, which is just helmets and shoulder pads, yeah. Yeah, brilliant. So, what anything pop out today? You know, uh, you said the kids are excited on the film and all that, but how was the hitting and anything kind of pop out for you? Yeah, today, like, like I mentioned, it was not a good day for the defense. We did not uh, – offense had their way today. We kind of had our way yesterday. And so uh, I'm, I'm going to say that it was because we have full pads on, but that's not – we just were – we're going to have a great practice day today. So hopefully it'll be better tomorrow. So. All right, we'll go to Kim Grinolds, and then Chris Federer will be the last question for Coach Gregory. Go ahead, Kim. You need to unmute. Oh, okay, there we go. go. Sorry about that. Hey, Coach, you know, just taking a look at the NFL early in the season and the amount of injuries that they've had, a lot of talk about them not having enough time in preseason. You not having a spring season, I know you would have liked to have had more time to get ready for the upcoming season. Are you a guy that's more comfortable giving one guy a majority of the snaps or with things the way they are right now, uh, you know, just rotating more guys in? Um, you know, what, what's your thought on that? Yeah, we, no, we, we're going to rotate guys in right now and try to try to really do this right between uh, Coach Saha and our medical staff. Um, we we, we want to avoid exactly what you're you're talking about, Kim, in terms of all those all those injuries that we saw from from the NFL. And so we do a great job in terms of monitoring. Uh, we got GPSs all of our guys, and um, practice will be a little bit longer one day, a little bit shorter. So. I think we're doing it right. We've not had any major injuries, and I think we're doing pretty pretty good that way. Um, but it, it won't be like like just the ones and twos are getting all the reps. That's that's not what, what we're doing. We're trying to make sure that it's spread out right now and bring, bring the kids along uh, in the right way. All right. Last question for Coach Gregory will come from Chris Fetters. Go ahead, Chris. Mamba, I know a lot of fans were really excited to see what Daniel Hamuli could do, especially, you know, coming off a performance where he was the defensive MVP of the Polynesian Bowl, highly rated guy uh, coming out of the Bay Area. Can you kind of talk a little bit about his progression and, and where he's at right now and, and the expectations for him going forward this fall? Yeah, um, I'm not sure what the fans' expectations are. I, do, I, think, I think the kid is very capable of being a really good football player. I think he's taking a step and he needs to take another step. That is, that's about where he's at right now. But I think the guys got a chance to be really good. All right, we'll close out with that. Thank you for your time, Coach Gregory. Uh, for everybody yep, on the thank call. Thank you guys, we'll appreciate it. We'll be back with one of the two players here momentarily. Stand by.
There he is. And all right. Let's see. First question we'll get from, is from uh, Lauren Kirschman, followed by Fetters. Go ahead, Lauren. Um, I was just wondering uh, with the new defensive backs, the incoming freshmen, what have you kind of seen from them and what stands out about that group? Um, they're hungry. That's, I think that's the big thing. And that's a really good thing. Um, you know, I'm excited for, the, for those guys to develop. Um, everybody looks good. You know, uh, Jacoby, James, Elijah, Mikhail, you know, all those dudes, they look real good out there. Um, you know, and they're just, uh, they're still learning the defense. Or, you know, they're very eager to learn, too. You know, I'm just happy. I'm always happy to help them, too. So. Uh, All right. Yeah, sorry, Keith. Uh, thanks a lot. Um, let's go to Chris Fetters. Uh, He'll be followed by Mike Farrell. Yeah, I'm going to, I'll be uh, beating him through for you. So go ahead, Fetters. Thanks, Joe. Hey, Keith, uh, was just curious, since we haven't seen you guys since the Vegas Bowl with no spring and everything else, can you kind of tell us how the how the other cornerbacks are doing? Who else is in competition with those two spots besides you and Trent McDuffie? Um, you know, everybody competes every day. Um, you know, uh, you know, Dom Hampton, he looks good. He looks really good. Uh, Kyler looks really good. Um, you know, even uh, Mishael, uh, he looks good as well. You know, everybody has really improved. You know, you can tell, like, in the off season, everybody, you know, has just been working um, to get better, you know, preparing for the season. So, you know, I'm excited for everybody to, uh, you know, showcase their skill set. So. All right. Thank you, Keith. Uh, let's go to uh, Mike Varela, followed by uh, Nick from The Daily. Go ahead, Mike. Hey, Keith. Yeah, I mean, you've been a part of really good and consistent secondaries every year you've been here, and you've got a lot of guys back this season. Where do you think this secondary could potentially stack up to the previous ones you've had since you've been here? Man, um, we have a lot of depth, and I will say I think this will be like another 2018 year. Um, you know, we just have a lot of guys filling roles. You know, Cam Cam uh, Fabiculanin, uh, Fabiculanin, um, he looks uh, very solid. You know, he's you know very eager um, to you know get better every single day. Uh, Julius Servin looks great. Um, you know, Cam Williams, uh, Asa Turner, everybody, just everybody in this DB room, man. I I feel like you know it's going to be a special year. All right, we'll go to uh, Nick from the Daily, followed by Christian. Go ahead, Nick. Uh, what kind of a boost was it to hear that Elijah Molden was coming back uh, the, the other month? Um, well, you know, between me and him, I, I always knew he was coming back. So, I mean, it wasn't uh, – I mean, sure, it, it's a boost, I guess. I mean, but, uh, you, know, I'm, you know, I'm excited to play with him once again. You know, it's, you know, both of our senior year. Um, you know, it's going to be you know, a whole lot of fun playing, him, playing with him once again. So. All right, we will go to, uh, I think it's Nick from the Daily, followed by Christian, or did I, Nick just asked that, didn't he? So let's go to Christian. Go ahead, Christian. Hey, Keith, I'm, I'm curious um, who the receivers are who have, who have given you guys the most trouble or who you've been most impressed by this camp. Um, you know, all the receivers, they look good. They've really been working hard this offseason. Uh, you know, Ty Jones, he, I'm, I'm excited to see him back in action. Um, Terrell Bynum, uh, Puka Nakua, um, even the freshmen that have came in um, with uh, Rome Odunze and uh, Jalen McMillan, um, they all look good. So, you know, I'm excited for that, for that group of guys to um, uh, really, uh, you know, showcase. Even Austin Osborne, you know, it's just uh, a lot of talent in that room. So, you know, every day we compete against each other. So, All right. We'll go to Kim Grinolds. If I missed anybody, you need to re-raise your hand, please do. Go to Kim Grinolds, followed by Masvida. Go ahead, Kim. Hey, Keith, you were one of the early commits in, the, um, in your recruiting class, and you've got a long relationship with Jimmy Lake. Um, he's been your coach for a long time, but he said he wouldn't hesitate to be over on the offensive side of the ball and really give you guys an earful. Has that happened yet, and what's that been like? Yeah, every day, yeah. And, uh, you know, he talks to us, and we talk back. So, you know, that's just, that's just how it goes. You know, we have fun all the time with it. So, you know, it's a lot of fun every day. And had you given much thought to opting out or going into the draft? Was that something that crossed your mind? Nope, not at all. Thanks. All right. Uh, with that, we'll go to Masvida, followed by Tony Castricone. If you have a question, please raise your hand. Go ahead, Mas. Yeah, so Keith, my question was regarding uh, what this offseason was like for you preparing for your senior year. And I'll just tag on to the last question and why. Yeah, what was it like preparing for your senior year and why you had no qualms? I mean, you had no. No need to opt out. Or that wasn't even a concept for you. 
Well, um, so, you know, um, yeah, I was just working all off season. I just uh, wanted to come back and just get another year in um, and just play, uh, you know, for Washington. Um, you know, really just improve on, you know, things that could be improved on from last year. Um, you know, just – and I just wanted to be here for the team. So, that's really was all any, of us. I'm sorry, was any point that it hit you your senior year from a leadership perspective as you prepared for this year? Yeah, yeah, it hits me every day that I'm a senior, man. Uh, you know, these last four years, they really went by super fast. So, you know, it's crazy. I think about it every day. But yeah, I'm excited to be back out there with, with my teammates. Thank you. All right, we'll go to Tony, followed by Christian, and then Chris. Go ahead, Tony. Hey, Keith, uh, three things for you. Jimmy Lake, your longtime position coach, is now the head coach. What's he like as a head coach? Also want to know about what TB has brought to the room uh, and also why the move to number eight. <laughs> um, Jimmy Lake as head coach. I mean, at first it was kind of weird, but at the same time, he brings a whole lot of energy. Um, you know, it's just, I feel like it's just a different mindset uh, with him at head coach now. Um, you know, everybody's ready to compete every single day. Um, he really fires us up every day before practice, after practice. Um, you know, it's just a different, it's just a different tone with him. And, you know, it's just uh, – I feel like it's going to be a whole lot of fun. Um, the second question was with TB in the room, Coach That's uh, right. Terrence. That's right. Um, so, Terrence was here my freshman year. So, you know, I still I already had a relationship with him. But um, I think it just brings, like, a you know, a whole another energy with him back, uh, with him and Coach Harris. Um, every day is a, is a fun day with them, um, you know, watching tape with them. And, uh, you know, just being out there on the practice field, learning different uh, techniques, learning different things uh, to work on. So, you know, it's just a different energy, really. And the moves to number eight. So number eight was just um, – that was just a number I wore growing up. Um, and I, quite honestly, it's because of Kobe Bryant. And, you know, rest in peace to him. Um, I made the number switch way before, you know, he even passed. And then, you know, once that happened, you know, it's just – yeah. Now I got to, like, honor it even more. So. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Keith. We'll go to Christian and then Chris. So wrap it up with the course again. Go ahead, Christian. Yeah, Keith, I was just wondering um, with the NCAA ruling that eligibility is basically paused for everybody this year. But have you given any thought to coming back and playing next year? And is that something that, that any of the seniors have discussed at all generally? Uh, no, uh, we haven't really gave much thought into that. Um, you know, we're just focused on right now and, uh, you know, just getting to this season. All right, we'll go to Chris Fetters. We'll wrap it up with Chris. Go ahead, uh, Chris. Keith, you mentioned all the receivers that you're going up against. I was wondering whether it's one guy from this current group or maybe even previous groups. Is there a certain guy that when you guys are competing in those one-on-ones and what have you, that every day you're looking at him going, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to match up against that guy? Or is there a guy that kind of got you fired up to get out there and practice and battle with him over the years? Um. I always say everybody gets me fired up uh, just to go up against them. You know, I always uh, go through a thought process of what I'm going to do and how I'm going to defend them. But I will say, you know, since I've been here, it's always been Jordan Chin that I've always, you know, had uh, to really, like, you know, strap up and really, you know, get ready to guard him. Because, you know, he always gives me, you know, it's always a different release off the line I got to worry about. You know, I, I just got to be patient with him. So, you know, every day, you know, I go up against him. And me and we both talk, mess with each other. But, you know, at the end of the day, we're both brothers. And, you know, we just have fun. All right. That'll wrap it up for Keith. Keith, uh, thanks for taking the time with us today. We appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. All right. Uh, we will have uh, Josiah in here pretty quick. I think he's uh, –